Hello, uh, can you see the screen? Is the screen, is that okay? Okay, how was now? I think it's visible now. So I hope you are seeing. Oh, just give me a minute. We can start now. Uh, there is, you can see it now, or anything, you can unmute and let me know. Uh, but the today's tutorial would be about uh, data preparation for instruction tuning. So, anyone here who heard about what instruction tuning means? Is there anyone who can share? Let's just go to the tutorial then. So instruction tuning is a specialized form of fine tuning. They have the same uh, concept, but uh, yes, like chocolate tuning. So what we going to do in instruction tuning is the difference is how we prepare the data. The data we used during instruction tuning is different from the one that you guys are using in fine tuning. Uh, the data is full of instructions. That is what makes it uh, different. So we are training the model to understand a bunch of uh, more than thousands of data sets, which are fully instruction, which contain instruction, for model, what to do and what not to do, how we should answer, how we should not answer. So it's a full of a full of instruction data sets. That is how we will fine tune that particular model, and we call that instruction tuning. So with instruction tuning, we can solve unseen tasks. So when we model or fine tune our model, uh, we have no guarantee it will work perfectly as all scenarios. Those kind of information you get when you have users. And when you uh, try out your models with different factors, you will see this kind of uh, new new things that the model, how the model answer, especially if you are when you are model, uh, using a model for a specific task, the model might not be giving the answer to that particular task in the way that you want it. And those kind of uh, unforeseen performance of the model you will see when you make an interaction with the model. So to fix those uh, tasks, how the model is answering user's question, you can create a data set to, to guide the model 
what it should uh, how it should answer questions so if someone asks you this kind of question you should answer this one or if it's um, just you will give it a bunch of instructions and fine tune it with that instruction which improves the model perf uh, performance in general so all chat gpt most of yeah in model that you know uh, that are famous have done fine uh, instruction tuning on their models just to make the user interaction much better with them. So ChatGPT, all of them uh, have this procedure down the, on the model. So I'm going to tell you what things you should not do when you build your data set. For example, I'm going to show you before talking about the details, what kind of uh, a data set for instru instruction tuning, what does it look like? Let's see it here. This one, for example, this data set is perfect for uh, instruction tuning. There is a column for instruction. There is a context. There is a response. Uh, there is a category. That's what the most important columns are. There should be a prompt or instruction. Uh, for example, for this particular fine tuning uh, task here, we are asking uh, uh, if by default or it depends on the model, but when a model is asked this kind of question, it might blabber a lot. It might start from, for example, if you ask it, uh, when is, what is the capital city of Kenya? Uh, it might give us history background before it answer the, uh, the right answer. Before saying Nairobi, you can go back to 1,100 years back and it's just can blabber about. So that's not what we want our customers when they interact with their model. That's not what we want. We just want to say Nairobi. So to fix that error, you will give that question. If you are asked, where, where is Nairobi, the capacity of Kenya, the response should be Nairobi only. So this kind of structure, how the model should be get a response, provide a response. You will give it an example of that response. You will give it the question and you can give it a context for that particular question as well, and trying to need with this data set. So you have to carefully prepare this data set to fix the errors that are caused uh, as much as you can. So you, this data set has to be formulated really well or uh, the instruction finally tuning to be successful on some areas or tasks that you want to solve. So this is Practically, how a data set in instruction fine tuning does a should apply. It should have an instruction or a prompt column. A context would be better and it should have a response. So the model can learn from its mistakes and know what kind of response should uh, it should expect. Not only the right response you should give it, you can also give it the wrong answer. So if you are asking a question, having this kind of answer is wrong, the answer should be this way. You can be creative as you want on your data preparation when it comes to the instruction data sets, but basically it should contain this detailed information for the model to understand. Uh, so the final output can be later. So this is basically the concept behind instruction tuning. Other than that, if, once you have that uh, data set ready, you will go to the fine tuning step like you are doing, you guys are doing now. Instead of the data that you scrape everywhere, you will train it with this data set and the model will perform much better. That is the purpose. So, what can you include to make your instruction data set uh, as perfect as possible? Because it should be a plain data, like any data that's going to be fine tuned. It should include everything because fine tuning something is not an easy uh, everything it's an expensive thing so it, your data set preparation or instruction data set should be well through so the first step is as always when we prepare data is data collection those data collections should be diverse uh, depends on your particular task actually for what model uh, for what purpose are you using that model? So if you're using the model on the app and you want to make sure that model is really interacting in the right way with your users, you can, your data collection should be in relative to your project or that application. 
that uh, you can be you can be diverse. So it, it, the Moodle's job on your application uh, could not be only answering you their question. It could be providing a lot of things. There is a lot of things we can do with uh, LLM models, right? So depending on that and how you, the answer should be, the model answer should be. Again, it depends on the the particular project or task we are doing. We can make it diverse, so the model can have different understanding of those instructions in different ways. So, like I said, we uh, collect their information from experiences of users with our model. Uh, the instructions should cover a wide range, it's just to make sure the model has enough information to understand and not make the, the same mistake on a particular task or anything. We should uh, we should cover a wide range of make a, a really good research on what we want from the model to accomplish and gather those information. What our form should look like, our instruction, our responses. You we have to it, it needs uh, through researching data collection before uh, going to the instruction building the instruction data sets. The next one, after we have all this information, uh, is the pre-processing step. We, like, uh, well, pre-processing, if I know, so it's just clean the data, removing unrelevant points, concepts, you know, it's just to remove irrelevant noises for the model. Uh, we, just as much as we can, we need to make the data set for instruction as clear as possible the pre-processing should be clean to make the module performance much better. The other concept is data augmentation, which utilizes techniques like paraphrasing. It's just the word that you use on your prompts, instructions, should follow a good English or whatever the language you're using when you train the model. It should have a good uh, structure. The prompt engineering, the instruction, the prompt column, where you write your instruction should be carefully designed as we have talked about before in prompt engineering how you instruct your meter really matters so uh, as much as you can having a good prompt a good instruction for the particular tasks you want to be solved is the best way to instruct your instruction data sets uh, metadata incorporation is just about if you have additional data you have instruction output context and stuff like this, but if you want to give also additional information about the particular tax like metadata, you can have a metadata column on your instruction data set and add additional information that you think would improve the model's understanding of either question. You can include another attribute for metadata. Uh, formatting and structuring this concept here is the same thing, it's just making uh, the, the way you present your instruction data set. It, it's just you will decide this one based on your project. It could be just and could be CSV format. Usually it's going to be a table format since we, the more way we put on databases and fine tune it. This is just uh, something to say. And quality assurance, like, like always, our data should be as, uh, as good as possible, we need to worry about how we can make everything clean so the model can have a very clear instruction of what to do. Uh, what are aimed to make your instruction unique much stronger? This the ones that point that I just made till now are basic things to add on to, to add when you prepare it, not only for instruction data set, but for any data set, you have to follow those steps, right? You will, we, that work uh, you guys have been doing so far, trying to make your data as clean as possible, as structured as possible, so it can be easier for the model. But as the next level, next level step, if you want to have a very strong uh, instruction tuning for your model, what can you include on your instruction data set? The first one is include more than 80,000 tasks, so which means rows. Your data should include for more than 200, 1,000 
maybe 100,000 tasks, different scenarios, how to improve the model set, the more data, uh, the more different scenarios, the model fine tuned in, the better the performance would be. So as much as possible, having a vast amount number of instruction data set data will help the model to perform much better because it give, will give it perspective in different scenarios, in different uh, ways, in different 118,000, more than 8,000 instruction styles, which make it better to cover uh, a user question much better. Uh, adding chain of thought reasoning data, for example, when you specify on your data set, for uh, example here, uh, for example, let's say I'm giving an instruction here, right step by step instruction on how, how to change a car tire. So I'm saying for my data set, this one. So if this kind of question is forward from a user, I gave it a context saying the, the human needs detailed practical guidance on the process of changing a tire on the vehicle. This is my context that I give for the model. And my response, when I give my response here, how detailed I wrote it, I'm giving it chain of thought reasoning data. So I'm giving a bunch of reasons here how it should respond or uh, respond like this, being detailed for the particular question that could arise from a user. So here on my data set, I have this instruction, the context I'm giving it, this is needed from you, a response should be like this. So this particular question needs this detailed reasoning when you answer your question. So this will make the model much better, better in answering questions in this scenario. Is that the question? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, what what kind of uh, tasks are the eighteen thousand? Like it's a preferably. Yeah, I mean it depends on the purpose of the model that you're using. So I don't know what kind of example I can give you. So maybe if you are using, let's just use uh, the Redash example for example. If you are using your model to interact with. Maybe the redash might not be better, but just let's just say that one. And if you are using a model for the AI system on the redash, for let's say you are using it for different purposes, not only visualizing that has let's say there are different tasks that are involved there, and your model you're using in somehow a model in that application, and a lot of users are interacting with that application, accessing your model for different purposes your model might not, might not be answering every user question as you, how you want it. It depends on the project uh, perspective that you want. So the more you gave it, a lot of scenarios, how, how it should answer the user questions regarding Redash, the better the model will have, uh, have information. It's just when you, you, the model is trained with a lot of data, it will be more knowledgeable with a lot of a perspective a lot of scenarios which makes it better in answering questions so the 118 are just scenarios what if if i'm using this application for this purpose what if a user asks this one it's just things that you will notice when there's a user interaction or your interaction with the application you want some things to be answered the right way for the application you want the model to answer this is questions the right way is just uh, these are information that you guys are by having actual experience with that and it's just a fact when a model has a lot of data a lot of information it will have a lot of it will be better in its performance that is what the 800 task is uh, trying the 800 task refers to Hundred thousand plus three four two. Okay. And the other concept is adding input version to data sets. Uh, this means by including both standard instruction response pairs 
input versions, example in the training data, uh, the instruction to model can develop a more comprehensive and flexible understanding of the task requirement, leading to improved performance and better explanation of its reasoning processes, just what we included here. So if the input is like this, uh, your output should be like this. It's just adding a lot of more information, ask us for, uh, for a particular input, what should be the output, and having a context give the model a better performance. So adding more data as much as you can will improve the user's performance. And the last concept would be mixing zero and few shots pumps a training. What are the zero shot and few shots? So the zero shot prompts are instructions that the model has never seen before during training. So you have feed your data, you have fine tuned it, but there could be other scenarios that the model is not covering, but you want to cover. So when those happens, we call them zero shot prompts. Just any information the model has never been trained on, he has no that information regarding that. Using the instruction tuning, you can add those prompts that are new for the model and teach it to be to get to know them. Uh, the other would be few shots. So in the training model, in the pre-trained pre data, the model have been trained on. There are few, few, very few examples of that information that, that from that instruction the model should do. Few examples or few uh, information regarding some information. And for those in the, the instruction turning data set, you can include more, more scenarios, more information to have uh, to make it more comfortable on those areas to have to make uh, to make the model more knowledgeable on those areas. So mixing zero and fish at prompts at training when you instruct your instruction data set, you can do this uh, scenario. So if your application is now needing some kind of information that your model has not knowledge of, you can include those scenarios on your instruction data set. Uh, you can also, like I said, for fuchsia prompts, already the model is familiar with some of it. You can add more information to it to make it way after you fine tune it with this instruction data set, it will be better at that. So basically, these are uh, the key points you should include. It can depend on which particular task are you using it for, uh, which part for what particular task you want to your model to be to be much better, uh, but you can. This is how you compare data for instruction data set. So this is a possible instruction data set. What should it look like? Uh, here another example for a data set that is used for instruction tuning. Here, uh, the purpose of this application is to make sure the model learns uh, a multiple question structure and how it should answer, what are the right answers. So there are a bunch of questions here and uh, it giving it the option A, option B, option C up to D and giving it the right answer. So uh, this particular model is fine doing this data set for instruction tuning. So the model can be a better uh, multiple question, question and answer. So this is for what purpose this particular model is being fine-tuned. So basically, this is a concept. Here, uh, I will show you this notebook if you want it. It's just a fine-tuning process. That's not the concept behind. And anyway, at the end of the day, uh, when after the fine-tuning ended, it will answer user question as we wanted based on our instruction, how we fine-tuned it. So these are just the final outputs after the instruction tuning happened. Now it's returning responses much better based on the data set that's been fed. And this one also does the same thing. Okay, let's go back to question time. Hope I'm not talking fast. I do that sometimes. But let's see if the idea is clear about instruction tuning. Okay, is it clear? Hey, Jarvis. Okay, maybe I missed that, but uh, 
can you just a little bit give us uh, the how we, we we choose uh prompt engineering or instruction tuning they the are the same thing it's just uh, the name is uh, one column says instruction the other table says it will make a column and name is prompt they are interchangeable Jabbies they are not different Okay, um, can, uh, is it clear for Hilary? Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing the, uh, so I saw the name was uh, mentioning like for Hilora. Uh, yeah. Maybe you can come, uh, you can explain it again how it's used. And, and the other tool, um, I, I can't remember. So I'm using the free call-up, so I'm not going to run anything here, but I will just give you a description, overview oh, description here. So for this particular model, I'm using Kilora for quantization, uh, heft library, and transforming this transformer. So after the data is cleaned here, this is just uh, visualizing the data to see how many data I have and the distribution what it looks like. Here, the distribution is a bit low around here, so I removed all of them here. Uh, it's not necessary for empty data to have. So this is after removing the unwanted data. Anyway, at the end, this is the final data, the clean data. So the modeling start from here. So I'm using the Hugging Face Transformers uh, tra and the Transformer Library. I have uh, imported all the necessary uh, models, and I'm using the Open Lama seven million parameter model. This one. So here I'm just all setting it up, all uh, the parameter adjusting it. You can follow also for this one, the Kilora uh, model, what you should done. But anyway, this is just a uh, configuration. So here I'm calling the module from using the form pre-trained function. We are on this step right there. Yeah. And then after I initialize my model, the next step is I also initialize the tokenizer. Uh, I'm using the Rama tokenizer from the transformers. You can also change the tokenizer, it doesn't matter. But for this one, I'm using this particular tokenizer. Okay, so what's the next step? The next step is passing the data set. So this training argument that is a library that you import from transformer again. So I the data set that I have, I divided into two data. There is the train data, the data that I will be training the module in, and I classified half of the data, not half, just a few percent of the data for testing. So after I train the data, I will test it with that new data and see if it's actually answering as it should. It's just a modeling structure. That's how usually when you pass it to model, you will have a training data set and a test data set. The test data set, you will test the model at the end to train to see how accurate is the model uh, responsing for the train data. So basically here I put the data on the train data set. Here is the testing data set. I'm just again here, these parameters, I'm setting them up, uh, which you can adjust as you want. But for me, this is what I chose to do. Okay. Now after this one, Everything said, I initialize the train functionality to train 
the particular data set, and this is what the train looks like. So uh, I gave it 4,000 steps if you see it on the configuration. So it outputs in each step what is the training loss look like. Almost it's good, 0 0.00. So I have not much uh, big loss. It's a good progress so far. Then I initialize my hacking phase. It's just to push my model. It's not this point, it's not that much important. Then after the training ended, I'm sorry, it's just, uh, you know, I'm all over. This here, I have pushed the module to a game phase. Then finally, I'm just testing after the training ended. I have seen the training losses that much. Here, I'm just asking, creating a reference to access my module and pass prompts and see what kind of output it gives me. This is the last thing that I did, and the output is what I want, almost almost all of them. So this is how it looks like. But it does need a GPU. There's a Google Colab Pro to run this one. And on this one also the same thing. Here I'm using PEFT at this model. But the same thing is happening here as well after the data. I saved this particular data uh, is found in Hagrid. I don't know what's on there, but this multiplication is working that as it. So, yes, after the data ended here, I'm again the same step I did before. I'm testing. And this one is not done. So anyway, uh, this is depending on the model. There are parameters you have to be careful for. But other than that, once you have a clean data, it's just passing the data and see what kind of output you get from the model and decide if it's performing or well. If you need to correct something, that you will continue. Is that helpful, Hilary? <coughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's a clear view. So um, I was asking also uh, that um, I have seen that you've used Databricks or Databricks Dolly. Uh, do you use it for pipeline or for or for training? No, uh, or I, for data sets. Here I just used it for loading the data. Okay. Go to the data from there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm uh, a worker. Uh, okay, so I've seen like bits and bytes on uh, Laura config. So I, I've been trying to use it and it gave me warning. Uh, also, I actually didn't understand uh, deeply on what it does. Can you say? A bit more on what it does, or do we need it? I mean, uh, you might not need it also. I mean, it's not that much a requirement. Just uh, sorry, can you give me one minute?
apologize. Sorry, I have a phone call. Uh, anyway, uh, to answer the question, um, it, it depends on your use. I'm just using between points for the quantization purpose here because I'm using Cumulora. Uh, you don't have to use them if you don't want. If the data doesn't need that, not need it, I work on. Another requirement to use them. Uh, but I will share this code if you guys want it, and you can also run it on your other instance. It should work there, and you can see the difference by actually running them. Okay, um, I'm going to ask any of the ladies, do you understand today's? Okay, I'll share it on the drive database. Uh, Daisy and Grace, I just want some confirmation from the ladies that you understand what the instruction to me is. Uh, Daisy, could you unmute your mic and tell uh, just? Yes, yes. I don't fully understand it, so I, I wanted to go through the notebook slowly later. Can you share it? Can you please share it? I, I will share it. It's just, uh, what, do, what, what, what is it that you don't understand? As he said. And I know your confusion. I, I got lost somewhere in the middle, so I wanted to go through it over again. No. What what is the just mention one thing that you under you get or that confused you? Right? I was wondering uh, the two the two um options right and start from fine tuning and chat fine tuning. Okay. So there are options. Are there options that one can use? Not options. It's just when you fine tune a model, the way that you guys are doing, you are passing a data right to make the model learn things. When you fine tune, that's what you're doing. You're adding more new information for the model to know on fine tuning it. But some some areas when you use when you actually use the model for different purposes, you can notice some things. How the model answers questions, how it interacts with users, how it interacts with input questions. So to fix that, to fix that kind of uh, unseen tasks that uh, that should be solved, solved, you will instruct in a strike an instruction data set. So this instruction data set basically what it contains is instruction, full of instruction what the model should do about a particular question or about about a particular task give it also an output scenario so this you would say if you are asked this question your output should be this one you can give it a context you can create a context column and give it a context for that particular uh, question like i should just told you before as a context was giving it a human person need for this question this kind of detailed answer or this kind of uh, attribute when you answer the question that's the context you give it for that particular text you give it the output so the model in the future when it counters that kind of questions it would have uh, some background knowledge of what it should do because you already find who did with this instruction that has it okay so so for instance if so it's on like um so the data set has the instructions and for is it like when you have a data set with labeling Level classes for text classification, so then the model will understand the classes. So it's the same thing with instruction. It will understand the instruction. So on you, yeah, it's just on labeling. You're saying we are doing that part on labeling, right? Yes. So let me ask you: When you label this data that you have right now, how descriptive are you on the label part? Did you give it examples of if it's something like this occurs, don't do this, do that? The label contains a kind of instructions? No. 
It's just saying it's political, just political yeah. news, sport. This kind, the label is this kind, right? Yes. But this one, the one that I'm showing you today, the instruction is detailed. The more detailed you are on how you instruct the Muriel to handle some scenarios, different kind of scenarios, the, the better the Muriel performs. So it's different from labeling. But you do it on, in addition to the labeling. In addition, to, I'm sorry, the question. I didn't like in start fine tuning, do you do, do you do provide the, the data set, the one with instructions, in addition to the label data set? It's not uh, instruction tuning and fine tuning are not are different activities. It's not something that you do them together. These are different kind of uh, fine tuning types. Okay, okay. So for fine tuning, you feed him any data for particular purpose. That's, that's just fine tuning. This one, you when your model is not performing as it should, even though you fine tune it or do everything that you can, there are some unforeseen tasks that could happen when you when users actually interact with that model. And to fix that, you might find it having an instruction tuning is much better to improve that model performance. So this is one type of fine tuning, but the data set type is different from the one that you are actually right now this week are you doing. So there are separate activities that they at the end of the day, both of them can improve the model performance. Okay, so after fine tuning, we can do fine instruct fine tuning to make it better afterward. Yeah, you can do that. You can do it also uh, now. Also, I'm, I'm. I think you're saying what if we connect the data set, right? On the data set that you have, also including an instruction. No, I get it. I get that you fine tuning is separate, and then instruct okay. fine tuning of the bullet later. I would prefer to do the fine tuning than the instruction. It's just. Uh, the instruction need a lot of data connection. I mean, data collection and observation. So you have to notice what if the model is not doing right on that data that I already trained it. So what can I make better with fine tuning? So gathering those information, those unforeseen tasks happens after actually using the model. Then you can do the instruction after preparing this clean data set for instruction. The instruction tuning can happen. But again, there is no law that says you should do it after fine tuning or before. Uh, right now, it's just you're doing fine tuning because the model doesn't know so highly or amharic or anything like that. But even for English models, uh, if you are using them for some particular purpose, the model is not might not work as it should for that application. And you can choose to do instruction tuning to set the model in the correct path. Okay, thank you very much, Kiana. Okay. okay, thank you for participating, Daisy. Okay, if there's no question, can I get a left reaction that everything at least a bit clear? Okay. Uh, Hilary, go ahead. Yeah, so something came up uh, in my mind. So if when you are doing the instruction fine tuning um uh we have we have uh we, we have to give it examples for like instruction and response or and uh if if that is the case uh in amharic so do we give it in amharic or can we tell it in english uh the instruction summarize the article and that response no you should give it in amharic so if you have a model that is already working and answering Amharic questions with Amharic input, it means you have an Amharic model, right? If you get to the stage, yes, then the model should get an instruction with that particular language, should be able to understand that language. Okay, so what I'm like implying is that uh, instruction is like uh, you, st you tell it, summarize the content of this article that is in Amharic, mm -hmm. uh, give, give the summary in Amharic if if that is like for classification 
or a summarization yani uh, summarization to so, uh, um, you saying let me just ask you so uh, you want to make also the response with english um yeah no i'm asking if that is possible or do you have to give the instruction in amharic is it possible to give the instruction in amharic is that the question yes like no uh the question is do we have to like it's a must or a, or a, the both options work the same way if you give it in america or in english yeah i mean if it gives the same output for you you can use the english but it's just at least the response should be here when you give it an example you're showing it how it should answer for that particular answer right it's just when you ask it what is the capital city of kenya and the answer is nairobi it should you are telling it to answer saying nairobi in amharic but if okay. you give with english language i don't know how effective uh, actually the model would be of uh, seeing the structure of that example in english to be better in amharic anyway I, i'm not gonna limit you just try it in english instruction tuning and if it gives the better output in Amharic, then great. But if it doesn't, yeah, you just test it up with both and see the difference. Okay, thank you. I'll explore. So it might be hard to come up in a short period of time in the instruction data set. See it just to start with a few that the instruction data set and see the difference. Uh, just to see. Just to say, even say that I have exported with some of data, but it would have been better with better. You can come with that result at the end, but just test it with a small instruction that has it and see the difference. Daraji? Okay, so my question is on on instruction data set. So can we drive from, from the first one, from the first that uh, we already have uh we already have for example just uh we have uh just working on labeling on label data set uh or mm -hmm. classifying the classifying uh a model so we have uh at, at first column we have input and uh, second uh, we have uh, output so can you drive from this uh, column to get an instruction so You have input output on the data that you have right now, Yeah, yes. That's how you structure your data? You have input and outputs? Yeah, we have the first, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, I'm actually just, uh, I'm not uh, adding an instruction part, but I have an input, uh, means it is a, just a type of news, and at the, at the output, so we have, uh, different different uh, types of uh, uh, the output name for example the maybe for example mm -hmm. if you are going to classify them sports so at the output we should put a, a sports or others and so uh, for for doing the instruction part so we can maybe we may add uh, another column that comes from input and output is that possible yeah. it's possible i mean the, you can add to the instruction column and see what it came on yeah i mean you are already halfway there in instruction tuning you already add output and inputs on your that has it so you can add the instruction or prompt column and guided how it should answer that particular question or and it depends on your data how you instruct your prompt so you can add them and test it out. Okay. okay, thank you. So you're free, free to explore, um, but for now, just focus on accomplishing the fine tuning part. Uh, if you have time, you can also add up these instructions to make your model better. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to end the tutorial if there are no more questions. <laughs>